Hello internet, it is I the Malik Aaron Aaron and welcome back to the channel. Episode 250, this is it. The finale. Took four years, over four years to get to this point. Wasn't quite the finale I had in mind. But granted, most of the canceled episodes, I had no clue what was going to happen beforehand. Stuff would just pop up out of nowhere and I'm like, oh. Guess I'm talking about that. And I intentionally waited for weeks for news to pile up the way I could like talk. But initially it was all going to be for one video, then 250. I just wait for something else. But I was like, you know what? A little, a little too much has popped up in the last bit. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to do the whole like splitting it up. So I already did. Episode 249, I did like all the newer stuff. 250, I'm going to go over all the older stuff, comparatively older stuff. And then we're done with the series. So, let's get started. Um, Okay, so the thing I really, really want to talk about was this new Exorcist movie from Mike Flanagan. This uh, radical new take on the exorcist that's going to be coming out march 13th 2026 friday 13th how original okay so how did this happen right so as you know last year the exorcist believer came out it was meant to be like a true sequel to the original exorcist basically what they did with halloween where you had Halloween and then a bunch of movies after that, some sequels and like a reboot and it got all real messy. But then Halloween 2018 came in and was like, okay, any movie, any Halloween movie that came out after the first one doesn't exist anymore. Wiped from canon, no longer matters. So it's just Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2018. That's how they did it. And with Exorcist, they're going to do the same thing. Just like any Exorcist movie that came out. After the original, doesn't matter. So same thing, same rules. And this is like after Universal decided to spend $400 million obtaining the IP to The Exorcist. But they, they did not, like the, the cost of this franchise is not cheap at all. So obviously... They wanted to make some money off of this because The Exorcist, the original, is probably the most iconic horror movie ever made. It spawned a whole bunch of ripoffs and wannabes and its own franchise. So, yeah, obviously Universal saw money in this. Why else do you think they spent nearly half a billion dollars on it? And they meant to have a trilogy starting with Believer and then Deceiver and then whatever that third movie was going to be. And I clicked on the wrong... Th well, that was the original like news of this. So Believer comes out. People hate it. Like, legit hate it. it was, the reaction was bad. Like, real bad. A lot of people thought it was a slap in the face to the original, a spit on the original. People just thought it was just a piece of trash. And box office-wise, it didn't do... Awful, but didn't do all that good considering again the 400 million price tag of the whole IP. Grant the movie only cost like 30 million, but in the context of spending all that money just obtaining the actress's name, it only made like what 130 something million, I think. Yeah, 136 million. Consider yeah, considering that 400 million cost for the IP, that's terrible. You're not gonna make any of that 400 million back. And, yeah, the director of that movie, uh, which who also directed the recent Halloween movies, uh, David Gordon Green, he just bailed. He bailed on the, the other movies. And so those movies were, like, in limbo for a bit until, I guess, Universal decided, you know what? Let's stop. Let's just give up and let's just start again. Let's try something else. So they got Mike Flanagan here. Who you definitely know from like his horror movies, especially his horror shows on Netflix. They were like, hey man, 
We need to do something with this exorcism IP. It's not going well. Can you make something? And can you make something that's not like the other exorcist movies? Make something special. Make something that will stand out. And he was like, okay, sure. And now we're here. So yeah, that's why this exists. That's why there is no exorcist believer sequels like deceiver and that third movie they're gone wiped (laughs) never to see the light of day which i mean they could have universal could have made them but who the hell would have wanted to watch them especially considering the reaction believer got so basically the exorcist the rest of that trilogy it got the same fate as the last airbender literally the exact same fate But I was supposed to start a a trilogy, and boy, that did not happen. (laughs) Because the first movie was such ass. I've yet to see that, I've yet to see Exodus Believer. I have no intention on seeing it ever. Yeah, with this new Exorcist movie, it's really going to have to impress me, because, like, these, there's too many Exorcism movies out there anyway. They all feel the same, they all feel cookie cutter, they all feel like they're cut from the same cloth. They all just... You could literally say they're all from the same universe. And I'd just be like, okay. (laughs) I wouldn't even think twice. Because they all feel like that similar to each other. So this thing really needs to be different. It really needs to make me give a shit. And Mike Flanagan, he could be the guy to make me give a shit about an exorcism movie. Or an exorcist movie. He could be the one. He could, you know, make the series, you know. I don't know if I'd say bigger than the original, but as maybe as big as the original in theory. I don't know. I'll give him a chance. I'll, but you know, this whole thing just interests me. And it's quite fitting I'm talking about this when I'm making like a cancel episode because the, those that exorcist re you know, I guess the revival trilogy that got canceled legit. So it's only fair for the last cancel episode I made. I talked about something that got legitimately canceled. So yeah, that was like the main thing I wanted to talk about. Is that this whole thing with this new exorcist flick. I thought that was so interesting. But that's not all. We got some other stuff to talk about. Uh, This Brad Pitt Formula One movie that doesn't have a name. So it's it's kind of... So it was kind of hard to talk about it initially. Because, you know, what am I supposed to call it? So it's coming out June 27th, 2025. It's from Joseph Kwasinski. Uh, I believe he's, he made Top Gun Maverick, right? I'm pretty sure he did. He made that, Oblivion, and Tron Legacy. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm positive. I'm positive this is the guy behind Top Gun Maverick. Is it? Yes, it is. Same guy. So, I definitely say you got some good talent here. And But I have no real opinion on this. Formula One, like racing, it's not exactly a big thing in the States. <laughs> um, I think the last one I remember, I think it was like Rush. With like Chris Hemsworth, like in 2013, no one gave a damn about that. So I don't know how this is gonna do any better. Um, yeah, racing movies like if they're not Fast and the Furious, no one really cares all that much about them, except maybe like Ford v Ferrari. But yeah, it's kind of a limited market here. Um, so yeah, and this is from Apple. Apparently it was snapped up over 130 million to 140 million. So this is part of like Apple's strategy of not really caring about box office, but just like releasing it to get like buzz, you know, awards buzz and whatnot. And I'm just I don't know how long the strategy is gonna go on for. It's just it hasn't really been working out all that great. I mean, Argyle, that was a flop. <laughs> that did awful. But apparently it did well on streaming. I don't, it just... I mean, I know, again, the box office doesn't matter in Apple's eyes. But from, like, I guess a PR perspective, it don't. It doesn't look that good. It really doesn't. Ideally, you want these movies to, you know, 
look like they were successful, not look like total bombs, because that's been the case for all these Apple movies. Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Argyle. I imagine Fly Me to the Moon is going to be the same. Wolves? I don't know about that one. Depends on how much it costs. Because these Apple movies, I don't know why they're spending so much money on them. I don't know why they would do that. Feels like you're just kind of, you know, kind of just putting them in a hole from the get-go. But, yeah, so for anyone interested in this, it's coming out next summer, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, yeah, Jordan Peele's fourth movie. So this was supposed to come out in 2024, uh, December 2024. It couldn't anymore because of those strikes you know writers and actors strikes prevent that from happening now it is coming out in 2026 october 23rd 2026 and we have like there's no information about it at all it's totally secretive so typical jordan peele movie (laughs) not knowing what the hell it is until like literally when it comes out um so yeah, um, I have nothing to say about this really. I mean, of his movies, I like Get Out, I didn't see Us, I will watch Us one day, and I liked Nope. So his fourth movie, it could be anything. Like I don't know what it could possibly be, but I imagine when it's like announced and when there's like a trailer and everything, people will get excited because you know it's a Jordan Peele horror movie, like. Like, his horror movies have been very successful. So, I am very much interested in seeing what his newest horror movie is going to be. Or, you know, not even his new horror movie. I guess his newest movie. So, we'll see what happens in two years. Um, But, but this isn't, like, related to him. Because that's, like, production. It's, like, just producing it. It's not making it. But that's coming out next year as well, September 19, 2025. But I already talked about that in a past canceled episode. So, yeah, that was Monkey Paw. Not Monkey Paw. Uh, yeah, I guess it is a Monkey Paw production movie. But that's a Jordan Peele's next movie. Let's just say that. And I believe the last thing I'm going to be talking about is Megalopolis. I think that's how you say it. I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, okay. So this thing from Francis Francis Ford Coppola. 120 million for this movie. Oof. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to make it back. But it's going to be coming out this September. September 27th. This was after it premiered at Cannes. And it will be a wide release. So it's not going to be like a limited release. And then it expands wide. No, it's going straight to wide. Which is a bold choice for a movie like this. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, oof, it's a 52%. Oh, that's, that, that's a bad sign from the get-go. It's like Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny all over again. Uh... But yeah, um, with this, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola, I mean, the dude's a legend, obviously. The man made the fucking Godfather. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't get more much more legendary than that. But I don't, I don't even remember the last movie he made. Like, does anyone? I don't, I don't really recall. I mean, I could look it up myself. Just out of curiosity. Um... Might take a minute, <laughs> but I will see. Yeah, because I know he did the Godfather movies, obviously. So I gotta like find it. Blah 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 blah. blah. I'm sorry, this is taking so long. This laptop can only go so fast. God damn, this guy's 85 years old. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, but his last movie that anyone really remembers was... Even was it? 
Supernova. What the hell was that? I remember that at all. Does anyone? No. No one remembers it. Nobody watched it. Um, is that Rainmaker? What the? What was Rain? What even was that? Jack. I know about Jack. Because that was like a bad movie. <laughs> With like Robin Williams, the late Robin Williams, where like basically the whole movie's premise was that like Robin Williams like it's like a kid, but like the kid was like he aged like rapidly, I think like four times as fast as like the average kid. So you know, you have like a ten year old like Robin Williams is playing like a ten year old pretty much. That was like the whole premise. No one really liked the movie. So but Francis Ford Coppola, I mean I don't. I can't imagine a whole lot of people are gonna care about this thing. I. I don't see it happening at all. No matter how legendary his name is, I just don't see people like watching this. Especially considering all the stuff coming out in like October. Literally the week after this, you have Joker two. How is this supposed to compete with that? Like it's not. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of dooming itself, honestly. Um, but I guess for any, any of his fans, any of Francis Ford Coppola's fans, do you want to see it? Then you can see it come September. I, don't, I can't imagine it's going to be an overwhelming amount of you <laughs> seeing it in the theater, but we'll see what happens, I guess. And then, oh wait, I got to talk about like Trap, forgot to talk about this. This happened like day almost two weeks ago. So trap. It got a very insignificant release date change. It was supposed to come out the 9th of August. It's come out the 2nd of August. Why? I don't know. I don't <laughs> it feels like really pointless to do that. I mean, obviously it's not gonna change its box office potential at all. But I I don't get it. I guess they were just bored. I guess I just didn't... I, I don't know. I don't know what the logic was here. But I guess they just, they just wanted to do it just because. And then you got to all these untitled movies that I obviously can't talk about because what is there to talk about? Like Untitled, Atomic Monster, Blumhouse Event Film, WB, WB Event Film, Locksmith Film, WB, WB Family Sequel. What, what is this? What what are these? What is that Space Jam three? <laughs> is that that's the only one I can think of when it comes to family sequel? Although I'd argue you're better off making a back in action too. That that's what I want. <laughs> I feel like that'd be the better choice. Um, but yeah, um, still gonna see Trap. I know the Watchers wasn't. Very good, but that that wasn't Shyamalan like himself. That was his daughter. Okay, that didn't work out. Maybe this can work out. Even if it sucks, I'll still watch it just out of pure curiosity. So, um, well, I guess ugh, Superman, the Christopher Reeve story. I can talk about this for a quick moment. It's gonna be coming out in theaters via Family Events September twenty first. Uh, so, you know, that's cool. And that is it. That is, we are done. Like, done, done with Canceled. So, yeah, started this series all the way back in March of 2020 when no one knew what the hell was going on with COVID. It was like, like, literally, like, it felt like, okay. You know, all these movies are going to be coming out in the summer. It's going to be fine. And then out of the blue, everything just went bad. All these movies started going away. They started getting pushed back. Some just went straight to digital. Um, it was madness. And I said, you know what? All those prediction videos that I planned on making early, because once upon a time, I actually, like in 2019, I did like my summer prediction videos like super early because I don't know. I just wanted to, and I wanted to do it again in 2020 because like at that point, like the 
March, April, it was pretty light when it came to movies. So I thought, okay, I'll spend that time talking about the summer movies, get that out of the way real quick. And then all those movies went away. So I was literally months of videos gone, just poof, out of existence. So I was like, well, shit, what do I do? So I thought, okay, all this stuff is going on. I should probably talk about it. And then I'm like, well, what should I call it? And then I thought of names. And I'm like, you know what? Canceled. That's a word people love to use online. Canceled. Seems like a fitting word. So, boom. The Canceled series was born. And I thought it would only last like maybe like 10, 20, 30 episodes. But as time went on, I'm like, nope. This is just going to keep on going. And there's nothing I can do. And then just to kept going and going and going. Things got crazier and crazier and crazier. So eventually things did get better over time with movies. You know, movies staying where they were. Not being on streaming or any of that nonsense. And things became like normal. Then the strikes happened. I'm like, okay, things are about to go crazy again. Then they did. And then they stopped. But then after a while, like er the earlier this year, I was like, I was kind of getting tired of making these videos, to be honest. It felt like a chore, but like a job. It's bad enough. I already have like two jobs. I don't need another one that feels like a third. So I was like, you know what? I want to end this, but when should I end it? And I thought of numbers. And I'm like, 500? No. 1,000? Fuck no. 250. I was, I'm close to 250. 250 is a strong number. A very strong number. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to end it there. Seems only right. Because I'm not about to stretch this to 500 episodes. That's not happening. A thousand get out of here. Like, <laughs> no thanks. So, you know, I decided, you know, 250. That's that's the end point. That's where it's all going to end. That's all. That's where it's all going to stop. And I, I will stick to that. And, yeah. No more cancel episodes. No matter what happens after this, I'm not going to make a video on it. And if I am going to talk about it, maybe I'll talk about it in my prediction videos. I might make a mention of it. But a dedicated cancel episode? No. It's over. <laughs> it is over. Like, done completely. So, yeah. Um, so, that's it. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, uh, share the whole drill. Uh, check out more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous um, cancel episodes of Man of the Channel from beginning to end. So from episode one to episode 250. You want to watch any of them, all four years worth of videos. You want to watch any of them from beginning from beginning to end. Uh, you want to binge them all, go in any order, I don't care. Go ahead. There's also box office predictions where I predict box office for movies. This weekend, I'm doing A Quiet Place Day 1. I'm doing Horizon Chapter 1. Blue Lock, I'm pretty sure I'm doing that. I don't know about Janet Planet, though. But, yeah, so I have some movies I got to do over the weekend. So stay tuned for those. But if you, if you want to watch any of the past... Prediction videos are made in the channel. You can go right ahead. There's also box office uh, recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. My uh, June recap, that will be between the 5th and the 12th of July. It'll be a nice video to make because nothing really that bad happened in June. <laughs> and we had like an enormous success in June, you know, Inside Out 2. Not to mention, you know, Bad Boys Ride or Die doing extremely well. So that's going to be a fun video to make. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos, you can go right ahead. And, yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.